Welcome to you all in the name of our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, and a welcome, warm welcome to any with us online. Uh, just to say our, our practice has been to sing, but very gently, at conversational level, uh, and unless we have an exemption to wear masks. And ideally at the end, we ought to speak outside um, if it's not too cold or too wet, um, and but uh, to 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 speak not at length, but uh, just to speak and to uh, be of encouragement to one another. Our meetings this week: uh, we meet on Wednesday, seven thirty online on Zoom. Uh, there's a link on the the web page, the church's web page. Uh, and then next Lord's Day at 10.30 in the morning and 6 p.m. in the evening, uh, when God willing in the morning will be Mr. Michael Payton from Chippenham uh, preaching and in the evening myself uh, and all are very welcome. Now let us begin by coming before the Lord in prayer. Our dear gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we may call upon you, the high, the one true living God. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, that we have a saviour, your beloved son, he who has come into this world to seek and to save sinners, to give eternal life to all that will put their trust in him. We thank you for your wonderful grace. We thank you for a free pardon and the free gift of eternal life. We Pray, Lord, that our Saviour would be glorified this night. Bless us, we pray. Have mercy upon us, each one. Uh, give us ears to hear. Bless us as we call upon you. And as we sing your praise, watch over us and keep us. Pardon, Lord, all our many sins, our, our many failings. Wash us clean in our Saviour's precious blood. And Lord, bless us, we pray. Bless, Lord, that all would be to your glory that our Saviour's name would be lifted up, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our first hymn is number 152. 152 in Christian hymns. Tis the church, triumphant singing, worthy the Lamb.
So first from Psalm 107, and then from Matthew chapter 20. Psalm 107. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses, and he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness, such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labour. They fell down, and there was none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, and brake their bands in sunder. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And then just verse 43. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. And then Matthew, the Gospel according to Matthew and chapter 20. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire labourers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the labourers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour, and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle, and saith unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, Call the labourers, and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. And when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that thine is, and go thy way. I will give it unto this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine eye evil because I am good? 
so the last shall be first and the first last for many be called but few chosen amen may the lord bless to our hearts the reading from his precious word okay let us look to the lord again in prayer let us all pray our dear heavenly father we thank you lord for this privilege we have uh, to call upon you to come before your holy throne we thank you lord that it is a privileged a privilege purchased for us by our blessed savior we thank you that he has given uh, his life on our behalf and that we may come in his name we thank you that he is our righteousness that he is a perfect he has offered himself as a perfect righteousness for all that will trust in him we thank you lord that we may come before you the one who is lord of lords and king of kings sovereign over all who has made all things and upholds all things by the word of his power lord we thank you that we may uh, call you our father we thank you for your mercy and though uh, we have rebelled against you yet you're willing to receive sinners back to yourself and to freely forgive and to freely pardon we thank you for the testimony of millions over the centuries who have put their trust in the savior and can uh, can give us their witness that your word is faithful and you have been gracious and merciful and forgiving we thank you lord that your word goes forth into this world uh, and each day even each day there will be souls uh, in different parts of the world who will come to the savior those who will call upon you uh, for the first time and know your mercy and pardon we thank you lord for our brothers and sisters in other lands uh, those places that have only yet recently maybe uh, received the good news of the gospel. We thank you for those who serve you in these places, who seek to make our Saviour known. Uh, and we praise you, Lord, that your purposes of grace to a lost world are being fulfilled. We thank you, Lord, for that glorious hope that our Saviour will one day return and judge all men and bring his call his people to himself to be with him forever in glory in a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness we do pray lord that you would bless and have mercy in these days we grieve that so few seek you uh, so many are deceived uh, by the world's uh, ways uh, and uh, sadly the world's lies we pray that yet many would take heed to your word be delivered from the darkness uh, of their own minds and of this world and brought to trust in the savior we thank you lord that he is ever the same glorious uh, and worthy of our trust ever faithful to his word and to all who put their trust in him we do pray, Lord, that you would bless and help us and be with us in the coming days. We pray for any uh, who are sick and unwell, that you would have mercy upon them. Uh, and Lord, raise them up. And Lord, go before us, protect us each one and keep us uh, in your care. And Lord, help us as we seek you. We pray that you would help us to call upon you and to know that you are near to know your mercy and grace uh, and your forgiving love uh, and to know your help and blessing day by day be with those that cannot be with us uh, in person we pray that you would help them and lord lift up the weary uh, and lord grant us all that grace that we need lord we do thank you for all your goodness we pray lord for those that govern as you've bidden us to do uh, that though they are but men uh, and sadly fallen men we pray that you would grant them wisdom uh, and lord help them 
that your people would be helped uh, and Lord that you would preserve liberty uh, for the gospel in particular bless Lord and help us for we are small we are weak uh, but we thank you that you are almighty uh, and Lord help us in all things Lord bless us now we do thank you for your word we thank you for our saviour's teaching and Lord we pray that you would grant us ears to hear and eyes to see help us Lord uh, in our own spiritual need meet with us teach us and Lord help us uh, in all things help us if we've never put our trust in the Saviour to come to him and find him a gracious and merciful uh, and wonderful Saviour Lord help us we pray bless us and be with us in the Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Our second hymn is based on num uh, Psalm number one, uh, number 624. Blessed is he who loves God's precepts. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 20 and this uh, fascinating parable of the Lord I believe primarily really to show us that the way of forgiveness the way of salvation the way of blessing with the Lord is holy by grace it is uh, that the notion of God's sovereign grace is foreign to fallen man. Uh, we are not naturally merciful in and of ourselves and religion as a whole, by and large, uh, encourages the idea that God is to be found by merit and not by grace. I remember a brother who's a, a pastor now in France, a Moroccan man uh, who was born the son of an imam uh, in Morocco, telling us, explaining to us a little uh, of the nature uh, of Islam and how it is all based upon merit. 
uh, and saying how uh, on a Friday they would go to the mosque and they, he would be given uh, money by his father to give to beggars uh, because the beggars would be out in force on a Friday because if you did a good deed on a Friday it carried, as it were, bonus points uh, before uh, Allah and uh, his father would uh, beat him uh, if he did not give uh, the coin to the beggar with his right hand uh, because the uh, Muslim doctrine is that there are two angels uh, for each person, one on their left hand to count their bad deeds, one on their right hand to count their good deeds. And if he was not giving it with his right hand, it would not be counted by the angel on his right hand. And one could multiply very easily such examples, corrupt Christianity, if you like, in the Middle Ages in particular, but corrupt Christianity today, uh, that merit is everything and grace uh, is pushed to the side. Uh, and the Jews of the Lord's day very much held by and large to a view that favor with God was by reward, by merit, and not by grace, and had largely forgotten the teaching of the Old Testament that the Jews were accepted, the children of Israel were accepted wholly by the grace of God. We even read in the verses before, uh, at the end of chapter 19, uh, the Lord's disciples, Peter asking on their behalf in so many words, what is our reward because we have followed you? Verse 27 of chapter 19, then answered Peter and said unto him, behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have? Therefore, what will our reward be? But the Lord gives this parable to show us that God freely forgives, freely uh, welcomes sinners to himself, freely gives uh, eternal life to all who will turn to him and put their trust uh, in him. The Lord Jesus himself had almost been put to death by the men of his hometown of Nazareth because he had, when they had asked him uh, who was he going to show favour to, when they said, uh, he said, you will say to me, physician, heal thyself. And he answered them and said, in Elijah's day, uh, and, and in Elisha's day, who was it that God showed favour to? It was to to Gentiles, to the widow of Zarephath and to Naaman. They were the ones who were the ones who were favoured by the Lord in times uh, uh, of the famine uh, and Naaman with his leprosy and that his favour would not be merely because they were his own hometown uh, and they were very angry at it. Uh, but the Lord here would seek his own disciples and we ourselves to, uh, to trust in the mercy and the grace of God. I'd like to briefly, before coming to the parable, turn to Deuteronomy chapter 26, uh, lest we think uh, that maybe the Old Testament would teach a certain legalism, uh, a certain uh, uh, reward by merit, uh, here, Deuteronomy chapter 26 uh, and verse 25, uh, sorry, verse 5, this was what they were to say when they presented the first fruits to the Lord in the temple. Uh, and thou shalt speak and say, ready, and say before the Lord thy God, a Syrian, ready to perish, was my father. And he went down into Egypt and sojourned there with a few and became there a nation great, mighty, and populous, and going on how the Lord delivered them and saved them. But he was to acknowledge Jacob to be a Syrian, ready to perish, was my father. And yet the Lord 
saved him and delivered him. Elsewhere, briefly, Deuteronomy chapter 7, uh, very plainly set forth. The Lord says to them in, in verse 6 that they are a special people, but not because they themselves were special, but because the Lord loved them. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people, but because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And all the festivals, the feasts that they were to keep, taught them these things, the Passover. They were not worthy to be delivered, but by the blood of the Lamb, they were redeemed. They were to be set free. And yet the Lord here has to re-emphasize because our hearts and the fallen, our men's fallen hearts will always err away from God's grace to our worthiness, our need or sense of reward. But if we can consider the, uh, the parable, we're told that there were parables very similar to this by the rabbis at the time, but they taught merit and reward, but the Lord notably different. Uh, it is fairly simple. There is the man that is an householder, the farmer that has a vineyard, and he obviously has much work to do in the vineyard, and he goes out at six o'clock in the morning. The, the working day was from sunrise to sunset to hire laborers into the vineyard, and he agrees with them for a penny or a denarius, uh, as it was when he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. He, that was the daily wage, the accepted daily wage, and he is happy uh, and agrees with them for that pay. And then he goes out uh, three hours later and he sees others uh, waiting in the marketplace. I think uh, it is plain by what is said that they were not there earlier. And likewise, at the sixth hour and the ninth hour, they were not there uh, beforehand. But he goes and finds more people who have arrived subsequently in the marketplace waiting to be uh, employed for the day. Uh, and find, saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said unto them, go ye also into the vineyard and whatsoever is right, I will give you. And they went their way. And there is a, an interesting difference here. He doesn't say, I will give you a denarius. He simply says, whatsoever is right, I will give you. And they are happy to agree uh, with him uh, under those conditions. Uh, and then again, the sixth and the ninth hour, he did the same. Finds others who have arrived in the marketplace, who are idle, looking for work, hires them. There's much work to be done. He's happy to employ them. And then lastly, and about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle and saith unto them, why stand ye here all the day idle? They say unto him, because no man hath hired us, which would imply they were not there earlier. He saith unto them, go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. The same agreement, whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. And... Uh, then, an hour later, when all is complete, uh, so when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, Call the laborers, and give them their hire. 
beginning from the last unto the first, from those that came at the eleventh hour. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. The master, the farmer, is gracious. He knows, and I'm assuming, uh, I'm, you may say, well, you're presuming this, but they are in need of a day's pay. They may well have families to care for. They need uh, that denarius, and he gives them uh, that day's pay, though obviously they haven't worked the whole day for it. But he does not break his word. He has simply said, I will give you what is right, what is fair and just. And he, by his estimation, he is happy to give them uh, the denarius. Uh, but, verse 10, but when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. They received the same. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and heat of the day. They felt it was unfair that he had not paid them more. But he uh, answers them very rightly, Verse 13, but he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? They had agreed with him. That was, they had struck hands to that or agreed to it, and he paid them what they had agreed. And he says, Take that thine is and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own, is thine eye evil because I am good? And saying essentially, can I not do what I wish to do? Uh, keeping, as it were, the agreements that I have made. But if I wish to give more than in one sense their labor is due, is it wrong? Is it unlawful for me to do so? And he says, is thine eye, you know, to, that uh, what I will with mine own, it is his money, it is his vineyard, he can do with it as he wills. Is thine eye evil? Are you envious? Because I am good, because he is generous, uh, and very appropriate to say so. Uh, and so the Lord goes on, so the last shall be first, and the first last, for many be called, but few chosen, that things will be turned on their head. Uh, and as a gracious pleading in one sense with the, the, the Jews of his day, who felt the Gentiles were excluded from the grace of God, but soon they were to be included, and soon the tables would be turned because many of the Jews would remain in unbelief, but many Gentiles would be gathered in through the preaching of the gospel into the kingdom of Christ. And uh, a plea with them uh, that, were, uh, is thine eye evil because I am good? Are you embittered against me because I am showing grace and favor uh, to others? who are in such need, uh, I have not done you any wrong. Uh, and it is certainly true. He had, the Lord had covenanted with the children of Israel to be their God, to keep them, to protect them, to preserve them. He had done all those things. They had in measure served him, far from perfectly, but served him. Uh, and so they felt they deserved much, much better. Uh, but uh, the Lord says that it is by grace that men are, are saved, by grace that souls are saved. And uh, uh, wonderful and 
those of you who know your Bibles, it is very hard to find anywhere where the Lord lists, where the Lord sets out uh, any detail of rewards for our service for him. But let me make some points, some simple points uh, of application going through the, the parable and what it means. Firstly, the farmer, who is the farmer? Well, the farmer is obviously the Lord. He is our maker. He is the one who owns all things. And he has work in his vineyard to do. There is much work for the Lord to do and he, uh, for, for men to do. And he calls men and women, boys and girls. He calls sinners, calls men to serve him. Uh, we, by nature, are, are idle, if you like, redundant in the service of God. We are born away from God. We are born uh, with hearts that are naturally sinful. Uh, and until we come back to the Lord, until he gives us new life, uh, he changes our hearts and pardons us and reconciles us to himself, we cannot truly serve him. Uh, the, the natural mind is enmity, uh, Paul says in Romans chapter 8, enmity against the law of God. But he calls men to turn back to him, to serve him, uh, and to, uh, in one sense, serve him in this world. Uh, and it is very precious that he does, that he does not leave us idle, uh, that he calls uh, calls through the call uh, of the gospel. But his reward uh, and his salvation is not by works, but by grace, holy by grace. Uh, well, you may have a little child who puts their trust in the Lord I don't know, it could be as young as four, even possibly three. As soon as they're able to understand the gospel, a child can be saved. Uh, and they may, by God's grace, serve the Lord for many years. Uh, and very precious and very uh, wonderful it is. Uh, and we may have somebody who at their 11th hour, uh, as it were, of life, comes to the Lord and seeks his forgiveness and pardon. And yet both are given, in one sense, the same reward. Both are given eternal life, the forgiveness of all their sins, a place in eternal glory to be ever with the Lord. We read no difference in the scriptures for such. The Lord Jesus said to the thief who believed in him uh, on the last uh, uh, on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. Uh, and it is of God's wonderful grace. You may have heard a uh, remarkable testimony, but it's not very well known, of the uh, Hollywood actor Steve McQueen. Uh, he uh, was... Um, an orphan as such, well, not fully an orphan. He was, his mum uh, was alcoholic. He was beaten and uh, abused by her partners. He was out on the streets, I was told, at age nine. Uh, and somehow learned how to be an actor, became a very well-known Hollywood actor, lived the life of a Hollywood actor, uh, uh, much drink, drugs, womanizing and so on uh, and yet uh, he there is good evidence that he uh, a little while before he died he didn't have cancer when he uh, came to the Lord uh, that he came to the Lord through the witness uh, of a flying instructor uh, and then of going uh, to an evangelical church uh, and he died not very long uh, after that, uh, a year or, or, or two or three after that, but enough to show 
uh, that he was genuine in his profession. Uh, we're told he died with, uh, after uh, an operation to take out a tumor, but with a Bible uh, in his hand uh, and wonderfully saved. Uh, but he, his grief was that though he was in a terminal illness, he had no time really to do anything for the Lord, but he was saved by the Lord's grace, if he was generally, which it would appear to be. And so it is with any of us and all of us that the Lord saves us by his grace. Uh, and it is very precious that he can say uh, in reproof to those that might uh, object to such things, is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is it not lawful for the Lord to show mercy? He is the sovereign Lord over all. Uh, can he not show mercy? Can he not show grace to lost sinners? Well, of course he can. He is the one uh, who uh, is able to do so. And it is right uh, and just for him to do so. I must confess in it may seem a rather abstruse point, but I struggled with this for a long while. How can it be that God can show mercy uh, to lost sinners because he is just uh, and he must punish sin? Until I read uh, an old Scottish preacher who, who, ex who explained very wonderfully that God is free. His will is free. He can freely forgive and show pardon. He doesn't do it without, uh, without, uh, with, with, as it were, breaking his justice. Uh, he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to suffer and to die, uh, that his justice would be satisfied. And so he may forgive sin and yet not compromise his law or his justice. Uh, and so he, he can say he does exactly what it is lawful uh, wonderful glorious way of salvation that only the lord could give that uh, the son of god would come uh, as a man and suffer and die in our place uh, that we can be forgiven and lawfully forgiven because the will of god has purposed it and is free to show mercy and grace to lost sinners and it can only be on the basis uh, of grace. Uh, he says, is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own mercy is his, grace is his. He is free to do with it as he pleases. Uh, and he rebukes those who would say, no, it is on the basis of merit. It must be if somebody is good enough to get to heaven. That is how they can get, get there. No, he would say, it is God's free and wonderful gift. And uh, the Lord Jesus has died. Why should the Lord Jesus die if we could earn our way to heaven? Uh, it is a grievous thing to, as it were, say, I am good enough for the Lord. Because why should the Son of God come and in great agony give his life for lost sinners if we can merit it, if we can deserve it ourselves. No, a wonderful free forgiveness and pardon. But also, and I must uh, apply this, say this, uh, it is a gracious encouragement that men uh, and women and all can come to the Saviour at any time uh, in their lives. Uh, now, I, I dare not encourage any soul to say, oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, I can put it off because on my deathbed I can turn to the Lord. Uh, because the indication from the parable is that none of them refused when they were called. None of them refused the offer uh, of work, to go and work, they all went when he went to hire them. Uh, but he will go and he will keep calling 
uh, and he will call sinners uh, at, as a, a child, uh, as uh, uh, a young person, as uh, in middle age and in old age. And if there is a genuine and true response, then wonderfully the Lord will give the same reward. Now it is very hard. We don't know men's hearts uh, and I would not encourage anyone to put off the mercy turning to the Lord. A uh, friend <clears throat> who we know well uh, was asked to take the funeral of a lady who uh, uh, was the, the mother-in-law of another uh, brother who comes out and gives out leaflets, uh, who is forever doing it. And, uh, and yet his mother-in-law had for many years resisted the call of the gospel resisted the grace of God, had said, no, I'm, I'm good enough, I'm not that bad. But some weeks before she died, she knew she was dying, some weeks before she died, she became troubled and began to see that really she was a sinner and she needed forgiveness. And only the Lord knows her heart, uh, but the brother was saying she appeared to respond and to put her trust in the Savior. Uh, there is also, uh, and I hope it's not offensive, but uh, you can look it up online, a Lutheran army chaplain, uh, American army chaplain, uh, German background, German speaker, uh, who had been a chaplain in a, in a prison uh, and possibly in a mental hospital but he was asked by the, the US Army to be a chaplain to the prisoners, the German, the Nazi prisoners at the Nuremberg trials at the end of World War II, uh, many of whom were sentenced to death. Uh, and he, you, you can, his testimony is that he believed some of them came and put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Some most certainly did not. I think Hermann Goering was very proud and resisted it in all manner of ways. But I listened to one account of uh, a man called Field Marshal Keitel, one of the very senior German officers, uh, whom this chaplain, uh, I think his name is pronounced Gerecker, uh, visited uh, and he was reading his Bible uh, and he prayed, uh, the, the Field Marshal Keitel prayed out loud with him uh, and he said his prayer was all about mercy and uh, trusting in the blood and righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he would say, that in his own estimation, the Lord, uh, the man may well have been uh, a believer. Obviously, we will only know in glory. Uh, and he would say about these things, the chaplain would go to the mess and would sit down to eat with other officers and would say, tell them about it and they would get up and leave. They would be disgusted uh, and uh, he said the only people who would listen were other uh, chaplains. But there's nothing in the scriptures to say that such a one, though they are the, the most wicked of sinners, Yet, if they have truly put their trust in the Saviour, will not be accepted. Uh, and obviously, again, the Lord knows the heart. Wonderful mercy for grace. The Lord will receive us, uh, any of us that come to him and seek his mercy and pardon. He will not turn any away who seek him with all their heart. There are many other instances one can know of in church history uh, but it is a testimony to the Lord's wonderful grace. The eleventh hour, those who can do but little or nothing in the Lord's service yet received by the Lord, shown mercy, shown grace and for us and any of us uh, he will receive sinners to himself. He will only receive us on that basis, but he will willingly receive us to himself. He will not turn any away. We may have put him off. We may have rejected him. We may have uh, 
held him at arm's length for many years, yet he will still receive us and still show us mercy. I'll just read uh, one anecdote of a man, Theodore Roosevelt, at uh, the early part of this, uh, of the 20th century. Uh, this is what was said, and this is from a little evangelistic leaflet. During the Spanish-American War, Theodore Roosevelt, much attached to his men, was greatly concerned when a number of them fell ill, hearing that Clara Barton, the lady who devoted herself to the work of nursing the wounded soldiers, had received a supply of special food for the invalids under her care. Colonel Roosevelt requested her to sell a portion of them to him for the sick men of his regiment. His request was refused. The colonel was very much troubled. He cared for his men and he was willing to pay for the supplies out of his own pocket. How can I get these things, he asked. I must have proper food for my sick men. Just ask for them, Colonel, said the surgeon in charge of the Red Cross headquarters. Oh, said Roosevelt, his face breaking into a smile. That is the way, is it? Then I do ask for them. And he got them at once. All the Lord says is to ask him for forgiveness and mercy. We cannot make ourselves better, but to ask him and he will freely forgive and he will freely receive and freely bless. And may he help us if we've never done so to put our trust in him. Our last hymn, invitation uh, to sinners, number 474, Come ye sinners, poor and wretched. Thank you. 
We do thank you for your wonderful mercy. We pray that you would help us all to put our trust in our glorious Saviour. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.